Okay, this video is on monitoring and editing tag values. So what I've done is I've created a little program with a couple of base tags, in one, out one. And if I click on the controller tag uh, tab here, I will get, I've got some stuff that I was messing with. Let me get rid of it. Well, I'll make, let me just explain what I've got. So in one, that's a, a base tag, okay? Out one is a base tag. Uh, result was a numerical value. I was just messing around with, with uh, numerical tags. If I don't want to see result anymore, what I do is go to edit tags down here at the bottom and just right click and delete it, okay? Uh, I'm gonna try to, to delete input one, but I can't. I can't delete a tag to, that's currently in use in a program. So if I go offline, let's see if I can delete it there. I can. Problem is I broke my rung. So one thing causes another, I guess. Uh, you cannot, like if you, well, I can't go online because I broke it. Uh, let's see if I can undo what I did. No, I can't. There's an undo button right here. So I kind of just messed it up. What I'll do is I'll right click here and create a new N1 and just kind of bring it back, okay? And there it is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna download this to the processor. Don't normally do this. Uh, you can create tags all day long with online edits, but adding and deleting tags is, Something you, I, I don't normally do much of that. I don't delete tags. If let's say I don't like, um, I don't like this this name uh, X. I just don't like X. What I might do is just you know leave it in there and just create a new X like X two or X B or something like that. Uh, but you know, let me try to delete it. I can. So I can delete delete it as long as it's not used somewhere in the program structure. Okay, and um, so you can do that. You can also filter for um, unused tags. So you, if you want to delete tags, let's say you've got lots of tags and you, know, you, you don't like all those extra unused tags floating around, you can filter for them and then delete them out. Even while it's running, you can do that. There's no real risk, I guess. Um, well, there is a small risk, okay? There's always a risk, right? The risk is, <clears throat> let's say I've created a tag and I'm using that tag as a place to import data into from another processor. You know, don't want it to, if I delete it, the incoming data has nowhere to go. So I suppose there's always a risk. Honestly, I rarely delete tags. I just let them accumulate. Uh, doesn't do much damage if you ever look at the uh, let's look here at the capacity if you look at the capacity of, of the memory capacity of the processor you'll realize that generally you rarely use you know a high percentage of the available memory so I, I never really cared much about deleting unused tags I just leave them alone um, anyway but back to the uh, the focus of the video Let's add a new tag here. I'm going to call it result result one. Okay. The default data type is a dent. So what's a dent? Let's let's find out. Let's look for uh, this is the help the help file. So I'm going to type in uh, dent. And let's look at the min max values for these. So a double int integer, that's what a dent stands for. A double integer is a, uh, a pretty large number, up to about 2 billion, 2.147 billion. That's pretty, pretty large. Um, you know, if you're counting boxes, that's a lot of boxes. It's, that's too many boxes, really, but that's the default data type. Uh, there is a, an integer, which is uh, up to 32,000, plus or minus. Is a long integer. A long integer is a positive number, but really big positive number. 
never used that. I just haven't had it used for it. It uses up more memory. It, it allocates more memory from the processor. So it's not really a big concern, but uh, I wouldn't use long integers unless I just needed to use them. Uh, there's also a, um, a single integer, which is a, a 8 bit value, plus or minus you know, 127, basically. Uh, there's a real number, which is uh, like, you know, everyday numbers, 2.75 pounds. That's a real number. So if I need uh, decimal precision, I, I have to use a real, real data type. So let's create a real data type. I'm going to call it percent. And before I press enter, I'm going to click on this and type the letters RE for real and press enter. Okay. That's known as a float, a floating point value. Okay. If I go back to the monitor tab, I can see that 0, 0.0. So let's let's preload that with 56.4 percent. Okay. Doesn't do much, but let's go to the main program and let's try to use that. So let's do a compare instruction. So if I am greater than greater than 25%. Let me let me do like 25.0. I would like to do something. What I'll do is I will turn on a coil called GRT greater than 25. I'm going to right click on GRT25. I'm going to create that. And I'm going to accept changes. When I accept the changes, it's only in the main program, so I'm going to say sure, go ahead. 56 is greater than 25, so greater than 25 is on. Okay. Um, so a couple of things I can say about this. The, the percent value, 56.4, uh, it can be modified internally or externally. If I right-click on this and go to Properties, you can see that I left the read-write capabilities open. So if I have an HMI screen somewhere, like an operator interface, I can that person could change that number, right? If I don't want that, I could make it read-only which means that you can't change it externally. You can you can change it within the program. Like if I, let's see if I make that 45%. Um, so I can change it, but only like within the program. Let's look at that again. Okay, so read only means I can show it on the screen, but I can't change it remotely. That makes a lot of sense. You know, a, a, a tank percentage, you don't want to, change that that comes from a sensor somewhere and uh, gotta leave that alone um, so what else can we do under edit um, how about this under monitor if I right click and go to cross reference it will tell me every place that tag is used so it's used in the main routine of the main program rung number one if I double click on that, it'll take me to it. Okay, so I can see, I can see what I'm doing with that. Um, monitoring and editing tags. Um, that's about all there is to it. I can, I, let me close this. I mean, it's not all there is to it, but up here, let's say I would like to find tags called percent. Okay. Um, wheel, I'm surprised. Uh, I guess I have to have this open. I was hoping it would, you know, open it for me, but it didn't. it's not that good, I guess. Uh, so it will find it for me, but. I have to help it a little bit. Um, let me try that one more one more time. I'm I'm curious now. I want to see if I can type GRT in there. If it will find that one for me. No. Well, I guess it's telling me it's there. But 
was hoping for a little bit more than that. That's okay. Uh, I've, I've never done that before. I just thought I would see how good it was. So if you have something open, you can just search for it up here and you can find, it'll find the occurrence of it and you just, uh, you know, click your way through it. Um, anyway, so you've got, got some search tools that you can use here. Uh, I am online right now. So if I make changes to some of these parameters, like I can change this here. Um, can't change the bottom number though. I'm typing, whoop, didn't mean to do that. Let me get rid of that. So I can't change some things uh, on the fly through the keyboard. If I wanna change this source B, I have to double click, like do online edits and I can change it there. Um, so I can do that, but I just have to, I have to go and do an online edit. Okay, so some parameters you can change on the fly just by by typing it. Of course, this percent would come from a, a center of some type, so it's not like you're going to force an override on that. That make, makes no sense. But uh, So tags are uh, either at the controller level or they're down here at the program level. I don't have any program level tags. These are all controller level tags. Notice they're sorted out. Um, I guess it's alphabetical. It looks like it is, yeah. It's alphabetical. Um, you can you can flip it by just double clicking right here, and you can sort it the other way. I don't think you can sort this. No, I can't sort that. Um, it's sort of like a spreadsheet. You can you can change the width on these columns if you want to do that. Um, you can change the format to like binary format. Um, hexadecimal. Um, this was a number, so it's a float. You can do exponential, but that's not not too typical. I want to see a percentage, right? I don't know what else I can show you on this one. Um, you want to choose your data types correctly when you make them because of the difficulty in changing it after after you've made them. So don't just press enter when you create a new tag. Um, make sure you've got the data type, you know, floats, ints, dents, whatever it is. Make sure you've got it right before you press enter. 